You have Arabian business that openly says, and mind you, this is Arabian business. So they are not keeping it hidden. 4th February 2020, UAE business growth halts for the first time since 2009. The business conditions have become worse and uh, it's ending decades of expansion. Decades of expansion, you keep, you know, building new, creating new uh, buildings and expanding new malls and uh, what do you expect? You're just expanding because you're expecting in the future for business to come in. That's absolutely stupid. In the future, everything is going to happen good. How about in the future, shit is going to happen. In the future, bad things are going to happen. So we need to make sure that we are prepared for the future. And uh, they don't do that. They always like to show we are the biggest, we are the largest, we are the greatest, we are the richest. And uh, you like to show off on Instagram. You like to show off on Facebook. You like to show off on YouTube. Well, now you need to face employment losses, drop in new orders, uh, operating overheads are really high, uh, nobody's purchasing anything, cash flow is getting locked, selling prices have been reduced for six, the 16th month in a row, there's no output for the first time in 10 years, well, you need to face all this. And speaking about losses, you have Gulf Business that speaks about Al Farah Group, which is asked to re structure uh, 2 billion dirhams that's 554 million in liabilities now for those of you who do not know alfara group once employed 18000 people they were involved in oil gas steel interiors concrete mega projects they had taken a loan of 2 billion dirhams from abu dhabi commercial bank first gulf uh, first abu dhabi bank and now they are unable to pay because of this they are terminating lots of people. They are delaying their payments to employees. Employees, I imagine you work, but you don't get paid a salary. Even their vendors are not being paid. And it's not just Alphara Group. You have Demac. Demac is everywhere. It's just being exposed as this company. And I'll tell you, from being a luxury brand today, it's going to be a bankrupt brand. Uh, 11th February, Demac reports a loss of 10 million US dollars. Arabian Business states this. Then you have VR uh, that is also being shown as losses. See, the Mac shows a loss of 10 billion, uh, 10 million uh, um, for 2019, 11th Feb. 12th Feb, you have VR that shows 1.5 billion uh, dirhams loss. Then the next day, February 13th, Union Property shows 218 million loss. And uh, another three days later, February, uh, Arab Tech shows. 774 million uh, dirhams loss. So you have Damak that has a loss, VR that has a loss, Union Properties that has a loss, Arab Tech has a loss. And what are the losses? Damak is 10 million loss, uh, dirhams 10 million, VR is 1.5 billion, Union Properties 2.18 million, Arab Tech 774 billion. So everyone's going in a loss. So if anyone tells you we are making profits, so oh, the future is right, shut the fuck up, okay? Etihad sells 38 aircrafts for 1 billion. It's selling off. Um, 5th February 2020, National has reported this. Khalid Stans has reported this. Uh, Simpleflying.com has reported this. They've sold 38 aircrafts worth $1 billion uh, to the global investment firm KKR and aviation firm Al Alta Vair Air Finance. Why? Because they need to cut down on their cost. Etihad is going to shut down. It's going to go bankrupt, okay? And uh, if they would keep themselves alive, I think they'll just live up to being, let's say, uh, an Abu Dhabi remote local operator because they just want to keep a little bit of their name and prestige alive. Rest, global operations, it's over, okay? I remember when uh, the ads were coming out. Uh, what was the name? Nicole Kidman or uh, the other one? Uh, they were showing off all oh, luxury and all that. The problem is when your ego goes far beyond what you can pay for, you will suffer. I'm not wishing the Emirate anything bad, but, you know, it's you have dug your own grave, okay? This is what you have done. I would say Abu Dhabi needs to stick to its roots. The vision that Sheikh Zayed had laid out of being simple, of focusing on agriculture, of being self-sustaining, that would have worked. You start going on, you know, I got this, my, you know, my thing is so big, and, you know, bigger than yours and this and that. You're going to suffer. And the worst mistake that they made was getting involved in this war 
with the Yemeni Houthis joining Saudi, biggest fucking mistake. And now they're regretting it because the Yemenis will get back. And that is why you see in Al Jazeera, so many of the news outlets reporting of, uh, you know, Yemeni Houthis threatening to bomb UAE, Yemeni Houthis threatening to uh, cause damage in Expo 2020, Yemeni Houthis planning to take revenge. You have opened a can of worms. Anyway, um, speaking about opening a can of worms, VP World will delist from NASDAQ Dubai, 17 February 2020, Arabian Business Reports. That in a statement, DP World will delist from Nasdaq Dubai. Sultan Ahmed bin Suleiman, DP World's group chairman and CEO, said that the global ports and logistic industry has been undergoing a significant transition. Uh, well, in other words, what they're trying to say is all these hi fi words of consolidation and vertical integration and all the nation and apostation and distillation, sedimentation. In simple words, is we are fucked. Okay, that's all they want to say. I'm sorry, we were overly ambitious. We thought we are going to conquer the global, you know, we're going to dominate globally. But we failed to realize our limitations. We are just a small little Arab country, small little country. We can't compete globally. We were thinking far beyond what we could do. Well, they have to pay $5 billion worth of government debt. They are not in a position to do that. They have to pay $9.9 .9 billion for a debt that will mature in 2020, 2022, which they don't have the money, 1 billion, which they have to pay in 2026, they don't have the money. And if you thought that was big, Dubai itself has to pay $23 billion in loans, which they have not paid, they failed to pay it the second time. So taking, borrowing money and showing off, anyone can do, be self-sustaining. The problem is they just, they just got carried away with showing off. And when you get carried away, there's a price to pay, and that is what is happening. Ex Dragon Skull Chief fires back, uh, says the construction losses had to do more with the economy. I remember Dragon Skull, which was like a, a powerful brand. It was incredible uh, those days when I was in Dubai. But today, it's a bankrupt company. So you have the CEO. Khaldun Al Tabari, who is currently in Jordan, who fires off against the management of Dragon Skull, say, stating that he has been, you know, a victim of uh, false accusations. However, well, you can't fight uh, powerful people. Abu Dhabi authorities have uh, alerted, uh, you know, charges against him. And um, he, uh, he will be taken back. Oh, yes, he is already taken back. Uh, thanks to Interpol. Interpol is getting good commission for doing its work for UAE. So they have arrested him and he's going to be extradited back. Extra, extradition. Extradition? Extradition? Okay. He's going to be sent back to UAE to face charges. So who's innocent? Who's guilty? We don't know. But then again, what can you do? You have Chalud's uh, group CEO admits UAE has problems. Now I find this very surprising because that is a retailing giant, okay, Chalup Group, massive global mammoth brand. And for them to admit that, uh, you know, they're going to offer, they're they are going through challenges, it's really bad. And how did they say this? Well, they are offering free space. You remember I told you that uh, there were rumors flying around that Nakheel Mall is offering free rent for two years to many brands. Well, it's now official. I told you this, that uh, these were uh, from reliable sources. Now, the reason why they're offering free space is because they have created the shopping mall, they've sent millions, and now nobody wants to open a shop there. So who would go to a shopping mall where there are empty shops? Nobody wants to go there. And the reason why nobody wants to open a shop is because you spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to open a shop, to put the interiors, to get the new staff, to do everything, to have uh, stock. And then you don't have any business. Well, you you will you will you know you'll have to bear the losses. Now the reason why nobody wants to open up shop is because low footfall, over speculation, future positive spending, anticipation of things will be better, excessive pricing, having an I don't give a fuck attitude. The take it or leave it. You know we uh, if you want take it or go back to your own country. This is what they used to say before, and now they are fucked. So um, 
Well, what can you do? Uh, there are too many malls. I told this before. There are too many malls. You're still constructing malls. You're still constructing businesses. It's going to fucking shut down. My gut feeling, 80%. 80%. Mark my words. This is my prediction. I have not been wrong with my prediction. 80% of the shopping malls are going to go, are going to shut down. They're going to go in losses. They are just going to, it's, they're not going to earn any more money. Okay. Just 20% will survive. And the ones that will survive are like, there are shopping mall, there are shopping center, uh, there are city center, which is the central one, or Dubai mall. That's it. Apart from the, any other mall, I don't see them surviving or sustaining. You'll see, you will see shops closing down. Just watch. Okay. Because you as a person, here's my question to you. If you're staying in Dubai, how many shopping malls can you visit with your family? You have once a week. That also after, you know, spending the whole day, a whole week working. Uh, for more than 12 to 14 hours, one day you get free that you want to spend with your family, okay? You'll just take them to one shopping mall and you prefer to take them to a shopping mall where you can do your shopping, you can watch a movie, you can do a little bit of window shopping, walk around and go back home. So one shopping mall. And the one shopping mall is normally either Dubai shopping mall, the largest, or there are city center. I doubt anyone is going to go to any other mall unless, of course, it just wants to waste time. Um, speaking about uh, malls and businesses, and you have, uh, what is this? Gulf News Indian businessman, Mr. Shoroff, claims that he's still the developer of Dubai Marina. This has been going on for years. I think, what, close to 10 years? It's supposed to be the, the tallest the tallest residential uh, bil um, sorry, building. There's supposed to be like, the, you know, like... Uh, uh, they were talking as if it's going to be the wonder of Dubai, Dubai Marina, one-on-one -on -one project, the, the tallest tower. Uh, well, I think at that time they failed to inform people that uh, this building was being uh, built on uh, credit. This guy, Sharaf, he had borrowed from Bank of Baroda, Indian Overseas Bank and Bank of India. He had borrowed um, around $349 million and um, he has to pay it back and is now unable to pay it back because of which the CEO of uh, the banks have filed a case on him. And uh, I think um, there are two camps. The banks are saying that this building now belongs to us. Um, this guy, what's his name? Shoroff claims, no, it belongs to me. Now, who does it belong to is a big question. And now the funny thing is when the people who have paid the money for the apartments, they've been waiting for 10 years. Just imagine, you paid a million, you paid one million, you have not yet got your apartment and your money is gone. So now when they went to Dubai Land Department, which once again, I told you is a dummy, all these dummy, they create these rules. They create these rules to say, your money is protected. Don't worry, they're there for you. There are rules to protect you. But when the Gulf News approached land department, they said, oh, this is a matter that has to be sorted out between the bank and the developer. We can't be involved. Then why the hell do you exist? Investors have waited 10 years for the units with no hope. They are paid. Um, and despite the building completed 97%, nobody can you know, move in. Uh, what the investors have to say, one guy, who, one person who didn't want to be identified said, um, I personally would prefer if uh, this company is out because they didn't communicate with us for one year. I don't trust them. And this is an investor who paid 1.6 million back in 2016. Imagine that. Hash, Hashim Al Hassani purchased a one, uh, purchased a three one bedroom apartment. Okay, he purchased three in 2013, paid 90%, 1.4 million up for each. So that's around 1.5. So he has paid around 5 million. And uh, what he found out is he had paid for a nice sea view, but now it seems that there is no sea view because it is being obscured, uh, blocked by an external elevator. On top of that, whatever there was a flow plan, that has not been, you know, uh, adhered to. He said, I just want a refund for breach of contract. And now he's not getting his money back. Plus, he's not getting what he has paid for. Another investor, Na Naiz Khan, spent 1.4 million upfront, full cash, two point, uh, in 2015. Until now, he has not got his apartment. Now, do you understand why I tell people, be careful. You put your money, 
You think you're saving money. You pay everything up front. You get nothing. So you tell me if I'm wrong. You tell me I'm wrong. People keep saying, oh, you're sharing fake news. Oh, you're so much of negativity. You tell me. Tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. Reuters. And for those people who keep saying that I'm sharing fake news, Reuters, Reuters, okay, Reuters, not Jazeera, not any hating uh, outlet. This is Reuters.com says Gulf wealth could be over in 15 years. International Monetary Fund said the Gulf oil wealth could vanish by 2034 if they don't have reforms. Why they say that? Because oil revenues are decreasing, taxes are increasing, deficits have increased. Saudi Arabia, before its deficit was 34 billion, now it's 50 billion and it's going to increase the next year. Um, countries like Kuwait need refinancing, Oman needs a total structural change. Um, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi, UAE, their unity is no longer there. They no longer can get uh, revenues from crude oil and oil income. And after 20 years of oil, um, 2014, the GCC, the Middle East, had 2.5 trillion worth of assets. Okay, Today, their wealth is reduced to 2 trillion. So 0.5 trillion is wiped off. Um, GCC government debts have risen to 100 billion in 2014. Now it is 400 billion dollars. So in four years, it has gone four times more. Most of the GCC states, Middle East, um, they have started to embark on economic diversification, reform programs, subsidy cuts. Uh, but at the same time, they are raising prices, importing, uh, you know, imposing value-added tax and taxation. So now. The Middle East is no longer a very attractive place to make quick money. So why would people come down there? Why would someone want to work there for lower income? And here's the thing. Until now, the Gulf states were showing this biggest building, tallest building, largest shopping mall because they could get cheap labor. Now people don't want to come there. You're taxing me money. You're charging me hidden charges. It's become expensive to live there. Why should I come there and work for cheap? You're taking my passport. You're not letting me go back to my country. So I would rather earn less and be in my country, then supposedly earn more, but spend more to be in a country that is not my own, where I don't have any rights. So you tell me if I'm wrong.